Much of history has been steered by just a handful of powerful dynasties. Over the years, however, some of these families have disappeared, either because their name was never passed down or because the line ended for good. These are a few of those families. The sprawling Plantagenet family encompassed several distinct houses, such as the Lancasters and the Yorks, who fought the infamous Wars of the Roses in 15th century England. Funnily enough, the Plantagenet name is actually something of a fake-out, since a powerful noble family in Western Europe at that time didn't actually use surnames, but we have to call them something, and so the name has stuck for centuries. The Plantagenets held the English throne from 1154 to 1485, when Henry Tudor defeated the last Plantagenet king, Richard III, and seized the throne for himself. Before long, the Plantagenet name had dwindled into obscurity. By 1541, the last living Plantagenet was the only daughter of George Plantagenet, Margaret Pole, Countess of Salisbury. When her son, Reginald Pole, openly agitated for the deposition of King Henry VIII, the king was unable to exact retribution since Reginald was outside of England at the time, so he went after the other Poles instead. Margaret was arrested in the ensuing crackdown, and after a little hesitation due to her position and popularity, Henry had her executed putting a final end to the Plantagenet name. Back in the Middle Ages, Italy wasn't so much a single country as it was a collection of loosely affiliated city-states, and among the most prominent of all was the Republic of Florence. Notably, it was here that the Medici family established the Medici Bank in the early 15th century. Enjoying a direct connection to the Pope in Rome, the bank soon came to dominate business in Italy and beyond, making the Medici family one of the most powerful dynasties in Europe. Their position was only strengthened by a number of marriages into various royal families, as well as the election of several Medicis to the papacy. But the Medici family began to decline in the 18th century, in part because Florence and the surrounding region began to lose its economic and cultural importance. The last Medici Grand Duke, Jean Gaston, died without a male heir in 1737, leaving just one named Medici, the electress Palantine Anna Maria Luisa di Medici. Anna Maria was long thought to have died of syphilis in 1743, but a recent exhumation of her body cast doubt on that theory as her body showed no signs of the disease. Still, however it went down, when Anna Maria died, she took the Medici name with her. In ancient Rome, gentas were large family groups that played an important role in the Roman social structure. Over time, being part of an established gens meant you were part of the elite political class and most likely enjoyed all the wealth and power that came with it. Two of the most powerful gentes of all were the gens Julia and gens Claudia. These were ancient families with roots stretching back to the early beginnings of Rome, and by the time Julius Caesar had risen to power, the two had merged to become even more powerful. The Julio-Claudian dynasty officially began when Caesar's nephew Augustus became the first emperor in 27 BC. This dynasty lasted until 68 AD when the emperor Nero was assassinated. By then, the importance of the gens in Roman society had dulled somewhat, although the Julio-Claudian family carried on for some time after that. The last time we see a member of the Julio-Claudian family is 131 AD, during the rule of Emperor Hadrian, when a man named Sergius Octavius Lanius Pontianus became consul. Pontianus was distantly related to Tiberius, the second Julio-Claudian emperor, through his grandmother. After 131 AD, however, there was no further mention of Pontianus or any other member of the Julio-Claudian family. It's long been said that if he wanted to, George Washington could have made himself King of America. In the wake of his victory in the Revolutionary War, he was certainly the most popular man in the country, and subsequently won two elections more or less unanimously. Washington's family history stretches back to 12th century England, when a knight named William de Hepburn took possession of Wessington Manor, leading to the creation of the name de Wessington which was eventually corrupted into Washington. The Washington family survived for many centuries, but ended shortly after George Washington's death. That's because Washington had no biological children, just his step-grandson that he raised as his own son named George Washington Park Custis. Washington's brothers had children, but over time, those lines ended as well. While there are certainly people alive today who can claim a distant familial link to George Washington, none of them are his or his brother's direct descendants, making his direct line extinct. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart is one of the most famous composers in history. Over the years, his name has become synonymous with classical music, and the man himself has gone down in legend as one of the greatest musicians of all time. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. It probably won't surprise you to learn that Mozart's family dates back centuries, and since you don't meet too many people named Mozart these days, you'd be forgiven for thinking the family has long since died out. The truth is, though, that the Mozarts actually existed well into the 20th century. 
Mozart and his wife Constanza had six children, but only two, Carl and Franz Xavier, survived to adulthood. Carl lived a quiet life with few notable achievements, but Franz Xavier became a notable composer and musician in his own right. Neither son had children of their own, however, and the descendants of Wolfgang's sister died out in 1919, leading many to believe that the family had gone extinct. There was, however, one Mozart left, a woman named Caroline Grau named Mozart, who was the great-great-grandniece of Mozart's father, Leopold. Grau passed away in 1965. Like every other non-indigenous American, Abraham Lincoln's family came from somewhere else. More specifically, the Lincolns came from Hingham, a village near Norfolk, England, where they lived until the 17th century. Samuel Lincoln then traveled from England to Massachusetts in 1637. The Lincoln family didn't really get up to much until Abraham Lincoln's political career kicks off in the mid-19th century, and they don't have much of an impact afterwards either. Abraham and Mary Todd Lincoln had four sons, but only Robert Todd Lincoln lived to adulthood. Robert Todd himself had three children, but as he outlived his only son, the Lincoln name died with him in 1926. Robert Todd's youngest daughter, Jessie, married Warren Beckwith in 1897, and they also had a son named Robert Todd Lincoln Beckwith, who was the direct descendant of Abraham Lincoln. When Beckwith passed away in 1985 without any children, that was it for the Lincoln family. The Tudors pulled off arguably the most successful royal usurpation in European history. Henry VII took the crown for himself when he won the Battle of Bosworth Field in 1485, ending the 30-year civil war known as the Wars of the Roses. Perhaps most remarkable of all was the fact that his claim to the throne was made through an illegitimate line, and plenty of others at the time had much stronger claims. Questions of legitimacy were a persistent theme for both Henry VII and his son, Henry VIII. Henry VII's oldest son, Arthur, died young, making Henry VIII king, and although his reign began with optimism, he failed to produce a son as he aged, leading him to become obsessed with the need to find an heir. When he finally did have a legitimate son, it didn't last long. Edward VI died when he was just 15 years old. A period of chaos followed for the Tudors and for England in general. Lady Jane Grey reigned for nine days before being executed, with the crown then passing to Edward's sister Mary. Mary reigned for five years but had no children, so when she died in 1558, the only Tudor left with a claim was her half-sister Elizabeth. Although Elizabeth I reigned for 45 years and is remembered as one of the great English monarchs, she died childless, permanently ending the Tudor line. When Elizabeth I died in 1603 without any children, the throne of England passed to her cousin, King James VI of Scotland. This made the Stuart family the royal family of both countries, as well as Ireland and Wales. James's ascension was not without controversy, but it still turned out to be a remarkably smooth transition of power. Unfortunately, that was probably the last time the Stuarts enjoyed anything that could be described as smooth. James's son, Charles I, was executed in 1649 when Oliver Cromwell and the Protectorate came to power. It took 11 years for Charles I's son, Charles II, to regain the throne in 1660, which he held until his death in 1685. Charles II's brother, James II, then inherited the throne, but was deposed in the Glorious Revolution in 1688 in favor of his daughter Mary and her husband, William of Orange. After Mary's death, her younger sister Anne took the throne and held it until 1714, when she died childless. Other Stuarts were still around at that time, but were legally prevented from taking the throne, so they spent the next 90 years or so living as pretenders. The Stuarts and their supporters, known as Jacobites, stirred up plenty of trouble in that time, but to no avail. Eventually, the family dwindled down to just one, Henry Benedict Stuart, a cardinal in the Catholic Church, and in his spare time, pretender to the throne. When Henry died in 1807, the Stuarts vanished from history. You might not immediately recognize the name Ptolemy, but you probably know the family's most famous daughter, Cleopatra. You will kneel. I will what? On your knees. Ptolemy I Soter was one of Alexander the Great's generals who wound up ruling Egypt in the late 4th century BC. Ptolemy and his first few descendants were capable enough rulers, but the family slowly declined into violence and madness and seemed to make death and betrayal their favorite pastimes. In fact, the infamous Cleopatra may have been the worst of them all. She is suspected of killing both of her brothers before she seduced two of the most powerful men in ancient Rome, Julius Caesar and Mark Antony. Of course, that backfired on her when Augustus invaded Egypt in his war against Antony. In the end, Cleopatra took her own life rather than be captured or tortured. Her four children survived, but one by one they were killed off by the Romans, all except for her daughter Cleopatra Selene, who was married to Juba II, king of Numidia. 
Cleopatra Cellini's son, Ptolemy of Mauritania, inherited the Mauritanian throne and seemed to be doing pretty well until he was executed by the Roman Emperor Caligula. Say la vie. The Beethoven name stretches back to at least the 15th century. The great composer Ludwig was born in 1770, but he neither married nor fathered children. Only one of Ludwig's brothers had children. Caspar Beethoven fathered a son, Karl, whom the composer fought to take full custody of. Unfortunately, Beethoven's attempts to be a father figure to Karl went poorly. Karl attempted to take his own life several times and eventually joined the army in what many believe was a desperate attempt to get away from his uncle. Karl eventually had five children, including one son whom he named Ludwig. The young Ludwig became a bit of a grifter, often pretending to be the famous composer's grandson rather than his grandnephew, and occasionally posing as a baron to boot. He was eventually forced to flee to America to evade arrest, where he changed his name to Louis von Hoven. Louis had one son who survived into adulthood named Carl Julius. Carl lived an unremarkable life and died of peritonitis in 1916, bringing a quiet end to one of the greatest names in musical history. If you or someone you know is having suicidal thoughts, please call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK-8255 or text HOME to the Crisis Text Line at 741-741.